Well, Linda and I are down here in the Sonoran Desert, and it's nice and warm. Back home, it's freezing cold. But freezing cold or hot, we still like our coffee. And we've got a few tricks to show you. There's two ways that we like to make our coffee, and there's some ways that we do it that make it extra good. So stay tuned. One of our viewers asked me what kind of coffee maker we use, and we don't use a coffee maker at all. We find that making coffee by hand, well, she's a coffee maker, I'm a sure. coffee maker. <laughs> Anyways, we find that making, by, making it by hand is very relaxing, it's therapeutic. Heck, I go to sleep at night uh, just thinking about getting up in the morning and making coffee. <laughs> One of those pleasant thoughts before I go to sleep. The two types of coffee that Linda and I like are, number one is cowboy coffee. There's a certain way you have to do that. And number two is a, is a pour over coffee, but it's not a pour through like you're used to seeing. And we want to show you that technique also. That's, that's my favorite. She likes the cowboy coffee. I like the pour over. So we'll show you how we do both of those. We're going to start with cowboy coffee this morning. Number one with your coffee, you want to make sure you start with good water, good sweet water. If your water at home is chlorinated or has a lot of mineral taste or something like that, you'd actually be better off buying the water and the gallons from the, uh, <laughs> from the Walmart or something like that. But make sure you start with good water. The temperature of the water is important too. Um, I think that proper temperature for water for coffee is about 190 degrees. You know, water boils at 212. Yeah, they said the optimum temperature is about 205. 205, okay. Well, there you've got it from the expert here. But up at elevation, like back home in, in Montana, we're up at 3,500 feet, so water, when it boils, is about the right temperature for making coffee, pretty close. Anyways, we're going to let it sit for just a minute after it boils before we put the coffee in. The amount of coffee you use, well, that that's up to you. If you're just starting out, just use as much as it calls for on the package. We use about two heaping tablespoons per cup, and that's about what that scoop is per, per scoop there. This is a big scoop, so... <laughs> yeah, and most uh, coffees have directions on how much to use per cup or per how many ounces of water. As for what kind of coffee you use, we've been using Seattle's Best for years. Uh, we're not promoting Seattle's Best, it's just what we like. And Yeah, and it's not expensive. We buy it at uh, Sam's Club. But you can find it in all the grocery stores. This is a uh, Seattle's Best medium roast. Right now we're drinking the dark roast. Whatever kind of coffee you like though, the technique we're using here will be the same. Well, cowboy coffee can be good and it can be bad. And uh, we're going to show you why here in just a second. The water's coming up to a boil. You know, cowboy coffee is a lot like French press coffee. The only, the main difference is the French press, of course, it separates the grounds out. But if you make cowboy coffee and you make French press coffee at the same time using the same coffee and water and everything, they'll both taste different in the cup. Some people think cowboy coffee is she throw some grounds in a pot and put it on to boil and let it sit all day. Yeah, some people do think that cowboy coffee, you boil the coffee in the water. That's not right at all. And you don't have to throw eggshells in either. <laughs> we were standing here watching that pot and I thought it would never boil. Anyways, we're just letting the water cool down here a little bit and then we're going to pour it over the grounds. Is it time? Yep, it's all right. time. All right. <laughs> Make sure you get the sound. Well, now it's time for the big secret. The secret number, secret number is four. You wanna wait about four minutes and let it steep. Not over four minutes. Here's the thing. 
you can you can let it steep less than four minutes and your coffee will be good at four minutes it's at its peak flavor this is through studies now but four minutes brings out the peak flavor if you let it go beyond four minutes then it starts to get bitter four while you're waiting you stir the grounds down because they all float to the surface within the first couple minutes so you just kind of keep stirring it a little bit and it's to make that crema come to the top that nice chocolatey brown color which it's doing oh, that smells wonderful now we'll give that a few more minutes and then we're going to pour some cool water over the top and stir just lightly and that makes the rest of the grounds go to the bottom see that's the secret to make the grounds go down a little cool water on top now linda and i haven't even had our coffee this morning so this is an important cup that's why i'm moving so slowly <laughs> well okay then ready yeah little cool water around the top this is a cool bottle too that's my brand new Yeti that I got for Christmas. About a half a cup is enough. Well, that coffee's ready. Hey, and I always give it the extra. <laughs> <laughs> now, me being the gentleman that I am, I always pour my cup first. So the ground, any grounds on the top go into my cup. I don't mind little grounds in my coffee. There will be no grounds. <laughs> Might be grounds for divorce if I don't. Yeah. Okay, watch this. Can you see this? Okay. Okay. And that's already coming out clear. Yeah, it's clear. Good. Okay, wait. There you see Linda's cup all perfectly clear. Okay. Good. Well, I'll give you the rest. Very good. Linda likes hers with two spoons of sugar and, and milk. I like just milk in mine, which brings up one more thing, the milk. You know, 2% milk, skim milk, 2% milk, they contain non-fat dry milk. You ever drink powdered milk? It tastes terrible. But when you, um, when you drink 2% milk cold, or when you put it in your cereal cold, it doesn't taste bad. But when you put it in hot coffee, it brings that bad flavor out. We only use whole milk, and the best whole milk we can buy, too. Some people use whipping cream. Uh, I don't go that far. <laughs> but I've had it, and it's delicious. But just whole milk will bring out that nice, uh, rich, creamy flavor of the milk. The grounds are in the bottom. A little more in mine, please. There we go. Mmm, yeah. Cowboy coffee is full of flavor. Now, there's something I want to tell you about. Quite a while ago, I was in Miles City, Montana on business, and I went into a brand, a, a, a espresso shop that was just opening. And the woman that was opening it, that owned it, had just gotten back from Italy where she went to barista school. She went all the way to Italy to go to school. And she was so excited about what she was doing. She sat me down at a table and she served me seven shots of espresso, each one different. The coffee was the same in each one, but the, um, but the technique to make it was different each time. And they went from delicious to very bad. And you know what made the very bad one? Was putting too much water through the shot. You know, you put the coffee in the cup and you put it in the machine and you hit the button and run the water through it well if you stretch that out trying to get more out of that coffee it ruins it man was it bitter it was awful I was so wired when I left that place <laughs> <laughs> but I learned about I learned about that and you know you can't put too much water through the coffee so in that respect if you were making coffee that you wanted to be weaker 
it would be better to make strong coffee and then pour hot water over that. It, the, the flavor would be much different, much smoother if you did it that way. You mean added hot water to the finished cup of coffee? Yeah, if you added that, if you did that, that would be better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I know when I was doing the barista work at church and using the machine, it was the old machines where you, you didn't just push the button, you, it was manually operated. And the um, amount of uh, espresso you put in the cup and in the strainer and the amount of pressure that you put pressed down on it made a big difference and also the amount of water. Makes a huge difference yep. as to whether it's going to be bitter or good. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing about making cowboy coffee and making French press coffee is it leaves the oils in the coffee and that's what gives it its real strong flavor, more flavor. It's also, though, what can upset your stomach and give you acid indigestion. So if that's happening to you, maybe that's why. But our next method of making coffee takes the oils out. We'll get to that in a minute. Well, maybe a few minutes. <laughs> okay, now I've rinsed this pot out, but what you see in there is the oily residue left over. That's from the cowboy coffee. Now our next technique, we're going to take those oils out. Let's get started on the next cup of coffee. Well, what looks like a, just a pour through funnel is actually a device called a, um, what is it, Linda? Clever coffee dripper. What that does, what it has is a valve in the bottom and the, the coffee doesn't go through it until you set it on top of your cup. In other words, it allows you to steep your coffee. So let's give this a try and uh, we'll show you how it works. Folding the funnel just right. For this, we make one cup at a time, so we don't pour too much water through the grounds. Okay, I'm ready for that water. Well, don't watch that pot, it'll never boil. Uh -huh. <laughs> and there it goes. Yeah. Yep. We're just going to let that water sit a minute before we pour it over the coffee. She'll pour that in there and then stir it up a little bit to get the grounds to settle. And now the magic number which is? Four or less. Is that the number for today? Four? Yes. <laughs> now you see there's no coffee coming through. Sit it on a pot. There cup. you go. Well, that's going to be a good cup of coffee. And it's going to be mine. <laughs> yeah, I noticed you made that in your cup. Now, for whatever reason, that uh, paper filter takes the oils out. There won't be any oil residue in the cup at all when she's done drinking that. Well, which one do you prefer, Linda? I prefer the cowboy coffee myself. And I prefer that one myself. You want to trade? No. <laughs> <laughs> that one doesn't have sugar. <laughs> That's right. Mine's no sugar. Yeah, that one's smoother to me. And Linda likes the full flavor of the cowboy coffee. Anyways, we hope you guys enjoyed this video. And yeah. if, if you did... Like, share, subscribe. subscribe. See you wow. around. How is it? It's good. Let me try. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you still got coffee on my nose again? Yeah. How do you do that? It comes off this little th lid right here. Drink sideways. Because I'm talented. That's why. <laughs>